to you with another jewelry making tutorial using supplies that I received for April 2023 from my good friends at PotomacBeads.com. So this was the one that had a lot of greens and kind of bold colors for spring. And I've actually gone through a few of my other Potomac Beads boxes to supplement a little bit of the colorways that I'm doing. I'm going to be using the stretch cord today just to be making some stretchy bracelets. And I wanted to go over with you the different types of glues that I have as well as some of the tips and tricks that I have regarding working with your stretch cord. So what you see here on my little bracelet board is a, a white bracelet that I'm doing with some crystals and some silver components along with some check glass beads. And then over here, I have got another bracelet in that chartreuse and that kind of turquoise greeny blue with pops of coral and everything. And I've already tied this and am letting that not dry with the glue. Something that you have to be mindful of whenever you tie these knots, if you're trying to hide the knot, which there's different schools of thought on this. I'm not really one to have to hide my knots because it is a clear stretch cord. But if you want to hide your knots, you want to try to get wherever you're tying your knot beside a large hold bead. This one here is probably large enough. See the, the hole there in that flower bead? So if this was going to be something on the end of the design, which I'm trying to do here in this white version, cut your ends off and then pull that through to hide it in the large hold bead. This one I'm not going to be able to do that because both the ladybug and the check glass bead that's right beside it has a smaller hole and so i'm not going to be able to pull that through i'm going to be fine with that this glue has already dried if you've got some heavy beads like these are kind of heavy the squares are then glue is a good idea if you've got something really petite like this design that i've got right here it's a very light design unless you're going to be wearing this like every day of your life and it's going to be take you know putting it on taking it off a lot then i wouldn't worry with the glue but it is always safer than sorry so you can go ahead and put that and i like to do it I'd like to kind of sandwich my glue into two different knots since this is dry I just like to take my flush cutters and go right up against the knot and I want to be sure that I'm not cutting my knots I'm going to put this bracelet on now I'm still always usually really careful because I've had the stretch bracelets from other other places and people <laughs> come apart on me so if you've put glue on there if you've got some nice knots then you shouldn't have a problem but this is really cute so this is something that if I wanted to wear with a little ladybug there I could I'm not really offended by the fact that I can see the little knot ends fine with that but I just needed a filler <laughs> with this and the ladybug was all by its little self so I thought well you know I've got that same color going throughout here so this is nice it's not so tight that I don't have any wiggle room I don't like things just right on top of my wrist and I usually do one to two fingers so that I know that I'm pretty good to go and then it's nice it's not too loose like no matter what I'm doing here this is going to stay on me and if I want to take it off there it goes very easily so it's not got any huge gaps in between the beadwork and it's nice and secure because I did tie a double knot and I used some glue so this is the cord that Potomac Beads sent to us it's their Potomac's stretch string brand. Then it's a latex-free elastic cord, no fray. So the 0.8 millimeter is almost one millimeter thickness. So it's almost just enough to fill your average bead hole completely. And that means that you don't really need to double up on the stretch cord. But now something that also creates maybe a little bit of an issue depending on how you like to do your knots is if it's too large to be able to do one knot or two knots and uh, too large to pull into your average size bead, especially if you're doing a petite bead like these little check glass beads here, your six or four millimeter beads and the bead holes are not large enough to be able to pull that knot through, then you might wanna go down to a 0.5 millimeter as long as it's not really heavy beading on the bracelet. Now, I love that it you can stop it here, so I'm gonna pull this out. Inches are on one side and then centimeters are on the other side. I like to work in inches, obviously. So I just like to take the inch side. Usually you want to hit the tops of your wrist bones as far as being able to measure correctly. And especially if you're doing like a bead strung bracelet where you're using wire. So I just take this where I see the zero. So I'm trying to use my fingernail to hold my place. When I flip that over, I'm almost at seven inches. And again, if you don't want to fool around with flipping over and all that stuff, you just kind of do it however it works for you. You can do this up top. Just make sure you're on your wrist bone there, right where you're comfortable. Then take your fingernail and hold that right at the zero point of the tape. And again, for me, it's almost seven inches. So it's not even quite six and three fourths, but 
I do like to wear a seven to a seven and a half inch bracelet. So in a stretch cord, that's really for me no different because I don't like to have things just right tight on my wrist, whether it's stretch cord or not. So you can do that with a handy dandy tape measure like what they provided to us, or you can use ribbon cut to size. If you want to save that as your size moving forward, you can use string, whatever you have on hand, as long as you're sure that the measurement is correct. When I go to cut, the stretch cord, I like to give myself a few extra inches. So three to four inches extra is fine because you're gonna be cutting that off. Whatever size bracelet that you wear, keep in mind too, if it's gonna be larger beads, that's gonna take up a little bit more of your bead tension. If you're gonna have smaller beads, that's gonna take less. And by that, I mean, whenever you put those together and you tie everything, if there's too much tension in it, then the beads are gonna rub and they're not gonna kind of be comfortable on your wrist. So you want a little bit of movement, you just don't want any kind of gaps. Now also on this stretch cord, I usually just kind of take my hands and go over the stretch cord. I'm warming it up a little bit. This is pre-stretching it. You don't really have to do this. Um, they've really progressed a lot <laughs> in the way that they make elastic cord nowadays, but I still like to do it. It's just heating it up a little bit. And once I've got that heated up some, then I go ahead and cut what I need. So for me, I've got my little measurement right down here on my table and I'm gonna give myself Eh, 11 and a half inches. The reason why I did that, especially on where you've got a bracelet where you're using some heavier beads, over time the weight of these beads, plus you putting it on and taking it off a lot, it's going to stretch that cord out. So if you've pre-stretched it a little bit, it might not happen to you. I got a whole bunch of glues over there, right? <laughs> I have some GS Hypo Cement. I have some Super New Glue. I have E6000 jewelry and bead glue. I have Gorilla Super Glue Gel, the Bead Fix Gel. I've got something called Zap No Drip, No Drip Tip Gel. And then I also have some of this jewelry and metal glue. And this is by Aileen's. I don't know if you're familiar with her products, but they're awesome. You can just kind of experiment with the different types of glues that you have on hand for your other crafting. But I will have to say, uh, especially for jewelry making, you want uh, something that's got a little bit of precision. If you just have those big, huge tubes of E6000, I mean, that's great. You can use toothpicks or pieces of wire or whatever, but I like to go ahead and get the E6000 that's got the jewelry and bead written on it because it's already got a precision and then a precision tip. And then you can make it a little bit better by replacing that out because you do not want to get a bracelet together and then you gotta put the glue on and then if it's something that's just crazy and it blurbs out everywhere or it just makes a huge mess or you glue your fingertips together. I have I have done that before, that's not pleasant. So what's my favorite type of glue you might ask? I will tell you, it's that Aileen's jewelry and metal glue. The thing about the GS Hypo Cement, it's got um, this precision applicator but it's got that little needle right there. So that is a great idea but for some reason I just cannot operate that with the precision that a lot of other people have absolutely no problem doing. Now some people like to put crimp beads onto their stretch cord and do a crimp but I do not do that because if you think about it it's metal that you're crimping and those metal edges, even if it's the rounded kind of bead, the crimp bead versus the crimp tube, it's still got metal edges. So when you go to crimp that, over time, as you've been taking off and putting on your bracelet, all that movement in the stretch cord is getting kind of sawed into by the crimp that you've used. Eventually, your bracelet might come apart. When you're working with these crystal beads, similar to the crimping with the metal tubes or crimp beads, the crystals, that because they've got really sharp edges, they might actually eat into your stretch cord. It's something you might want to avoid. Okay, so right here is sort of where I'm getting to the end of the bracelet, but I wanna just double check because when I go to tie, you see how this is like a pearl against a pearl? So already I know that my pattern might be off on the back, but it depends on what I want to be the focal. So I just wanna get a kind of a gauge here as far as my measurements go, but I wanna get my wrist in here and see about how this is going to set and it looks like I need about an, another inch worth of beads. Okay, so I think what I've decided to do, I just added a silver bead, and that is, again is from Potomac Beads. It's a seamless, smooth round. I'm just gonna add that in there. That way when I tie my bead, it's got a hole that's big enough that I should be able to hide 
the knot. My cord was pre-stretched, so I'm not worried about any kind of over tightness, but this doesn't have any real heavy beadwork anyway. I want to take both sides of the cord and then just kind of pull the beads up together. I'm going to go once through the loop and then twice through the loop, which is like a square knot or a surgeon's knot. And then I'm just going to start pulling the slack out of that knot. And then I'm going to keep hold of both sides of that cord. And then I'm gonna grab my beads and then I'm pulling the actual cord itself that runs through the beads so that I'm tightening that knot. And then I'm gonna do that same thing again. And actually, I don't even think I'll need a second one because these beads aren't very heavy. So I think I'm pretty good there. Just pull, and I'm not doing anything harsh. Again, I'm just gently pulling, but I am letting all the slack come out so that there's not any gaps of the beads. Normally, if it's something that was like this bracelet here, and I thought it would be a lot of wear and tear uh, because of the heaviness of it, I would go through here and then do another double twist. Okay, and before I actually pull that down, I would come in here with my glue and put that onto the actual first knot. And then when I go to tie or pull the slack out, it just sandwiches that glue in between the knots. Now, I don't need a second knot here. I'm just going to go ahead and use the glue that I have here in my hand. If you want to use one with a fine tip applicator, you can do that. I don't really need that. I'm going to put a drop. Now, this super new glue. You do have to be careful. It's like liquid. This is kind of old, so it's not as liquidy. If you wanted to use your precision tip though, this is the Hypo Cement, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. So that's that needle that goes down into the glue. Gotta be careful with this because the buildup of the pressure is a lot. I'm gonna put that in there on top of that knot but you've got to be very fast in order to get this needle back in there you got that in there but the problem is if you're not quick and you don't get it in there like you sh you should then the whole cap solidifies and you have to use your pinch or something so i don't that's not my favorite a lot of people use this with absolutely no problem i can't seem to get it in there quick enough so anyway i have some glue on that and then once that dries I can come on here just like I did this other bracelet and use the cutter to then cut these tails off. And then if you get any glue on you, like see I got some glue on me, then you want to make sure you wash your hands immediately. I'm going to come back and then we'll see if I can pull that through the bead. And I don't think so because the, the hole in that bead was too small and my knot was too large. I am now going to cut off the tails. I, the, the knot that I made is too large to go through this silver bead here. I mean, it's got a decent size hole, but it's just a regular size. It's not enough to handle that square knot that I did. If this were a 0.5 millimeter stretch cord instead of this larger 0.8, maybe it might have gone through there. You could use the 0.5 because of this small bracelet is very light the largest bead is this here and it's just a check glass bead so i mean it's not anything that is going to be something too heavy for 0.5 so you could do that if you are really concerned about hiding your knots unless you know exactly where that knot is you're really not going to be calling attention to it and i know it's right here at this silver bead now my pattern is a little bit off but again it's right there at the back and i'm fine with that so let's put it on shall we and no matter how well you make these things i'm always worried about the cord breaking or coming apart, whatever. That's why I don't like to wear stretch bracelets, but they are popular. That went on with no problem. It's loose, but it's not too tight, not too loose. And there's no gaps in my beadwork. That's really cute. I like that. All right, and then I'm gonna take that off. I went ahead and just strung all these colorful little flowers on here to show you how to get the knot pulled through a large hole bead. It's a little bit larger, just overhanded it. And then I'm going to come over here. Now, right here, you could just tie a single knot, not worry about the square knot like I like to do. The only reason why I like to do that is because I feel like it is more secure. So I'm going to continue with that. Now, it does make your knot a lot larger when you do that. Again, I'm not harshly pulling this at all. And then I want to come in between the flower. 
corners and pull on either side of the cord so that that is tightening up the knot and then come in here again and pull see how that is going right into that hole the bead so that would be big enough if I did another one of those knots, it would be too much. So I'm just going to do a single knot a second time, but I am going to put a little bit of this super new glue in. Just come right over here on top of the knot. Squeeze a little bit in there and then just pull. And this is a single knot this time. So then that just kind of smooshes that little dot of glue that I put in between the first knot and the second knot. All of my space is out of the bracelet, so it just looks like a bunch of beautiful little flowers. I'm gonna let this glue dry, and then I'm gonna come back and snip off the cords, and we're ready to roll. Into the center of that blue flower, I just pulled over either this bead or this bead and pulled it through gently to where it's now hidden by the, the blue flower, and if for any reason you needed to pull it back out to do anything, then of course you could do so. There it is. So I just come over here um, on the other side of the black flower so I've got enough room. And you can actually see that going through the flower. There you go. And then just kind of nudge everything back around. And you've got a cute little flower bracelet there. All these little different colored flowers. Really cute. And you can't see the knot. If that bothers you, then just kind of do that technique and you should be good to go. So I have three bracelets here and I still have a ton of beads left over. You can use this stretch cord technique of the bracelet making and do like a little petite rings with tiny little seed beads or any kind of small bead that you'd like to have. Uh, you can even use a larger bead like maybe this as your focal and then have it with seed beads or small pearls or whatever have you. That's an idea. There's so many different things that you can do with it being a stretch cord. Now again, this is personal preference because like I said before, I prefer to use bead stringing wire because I just like the thought of having a metal wire holding everything together and me crimping it. The tape measure is extremely handy. So I used several of my little beads here from the April box, but I've got tons more here and I want to actually use the cone beads for a particular project that I have in mind as well as the halo beads. I wanted really bad to use the halo beads in the, the project here, but we've had some sickness in our family and there's just been a lot going on for this month. So the stretch cord bracelets in the capacity that you have them here is all I had time to do. I'm sorry, but there's always tomorrow, right? So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial using stretch cord from Potomac. Now I have not used their stretch cord before, so I really do enjoy being able to test that out uh, compared to the other brands that I have used before. And that is just something that I really enjoy about Potomac Bees because they have created certain things like the, the crystals and the pearls and the stretch cord and the tools and various things like that under their name brand. And it's very helpful when you can just do one-stop shopping with Potomac Beads. And if you are interested in their program, I will have my referral link below that you can go and subscribe to them. I would appreciate you using that link so that I get credit for that referral. And I'll also put the links below like I did for the haul uh, to any of the products that you see here as long as they are still available on their website. And those will be my affiliate links. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share with any of your jewelry making friends that might enjoy these items or tutorials or bead hauls. I would appreciate that. If you have not already done so, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a sparkle day, y'all. Bye.